Thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. This budget was overshadowed by the news that the Chancellor had done a, really, a, a fairly rare thing for a politician. He'd put his hand into his own pocket. Was this for a youth club in Hounslow or perhaps a new high-tech hospital scanner? No, it was for his own party association. Meanwhile, my constituents have to live with yet another budget from yet another tired Conservative government. After 14 years of, of their government, our economy is in recession. Living standards are falling, public services are in crisis, and our country is desperate for change. 22 fiscal statements since 2014 that promised higher wages, promised higher skills, and promised higher growth, and yet delivered none of these. And today, another statement promising dollops of jam next year at the earliest. My constituents are seeing, like all of our constituents, their bills rise, their weekly shop more expensive, their rents and mortgages skyrocket, and their debts pile up. So what does this budget offer them? The OBR figures show that under Sunak's tax plan, working people are on average £870 a year worse off. The government has given 5p for every 10p taken away from our constituents. This included the OBR's revised estimate of the impact of tax, of tax threshold freezes that raised 30, 41 billion over the forecast period and create 3.7 million more taxpayers. It does nothing, this budget, to tackle the housing crisis. As many members have said, the biggest crisis that's facing my constituents, families locally cannot afford to rent, let alone buy, key workers being priced out of the area and home ownership, but a distant dream. And hundreds of children in my constituency, I want to say living, but frankly they're existing in insecure, often dangerous, temporary accommodation, costing Hounslow Council and the benefits budget millions of pounds each year, money that could be spent on building new homes. It's no wonder that more and more lifelong Conservatives I've met in recent months, whether in Chiswick, or in by-election campaigns in Bedfordshire or Kingswood, who've told me that they're no longer voting for the party opposite. And it's probably why I was seeing so many glum faces on the benches opposite while the Chancellor was speaking. And now followed, as this is the end of today's debate, followed by, and I've listened to so many of the, the party opposite, uh, criticising his statement in their contributions, including the member for Dover who's just spoken. Talk about a divided party. But, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, this budget fails to deliver not only for uh, working families uh, and uh, people seeking accommodation, but it fails to deliver for businesses. I think of the businesses I've met across Hounslow. Pubs struggling with soaring energy costs, corner shops facing a crime spree, manufacturers and exporters facing barriers in trading with Europe. This budget offers virtually nothing for them nothing on business rates, nothing on improving trade, and nothing on skills. Mr Deputy Speaker, my constituents, taxpayers and users of public services, as they, as they are, they would assume the Treasury understands basic economic concepts, such as that higher taxes for them means more money for the Treasury and public services. But today the Chancellor joked about coming late to discovering his inner Laffer curve, which means that sometimes raising some taxes actually results in less tax revenue. So is it because he's discovered the Laffer curve? What, is this why the Chancellor is cancelling the alcohol duty rise due next year? As he's been told, he's lost a couple of billion uh, pounds of uh, tax revenue since last year's rise a couple of billion that our public services so desperately need. Mr Deputy Speaker, this is basic stuff, basic economics. It's even covered in the GCSE level economics syllabus. So in conclusion, my constituents from Chiswick to Hounslow deserve better than this budget today. The growing economic mess is what happens when a government that is obsessed with headlines, obsessed with the short term win, and obsessed with focusing 
on the politics rather than on the long-term investment that our economy needs. It's no wonder that we're trapped in recession, trapped with low growth, trapped with decimated public services and trapped with a weak economy. The tax burden on our constituents, higher. The weekly shock, higher. Rent, mortgages and energy costs, higher. Most people, worse off. After 14 years of Conservative rule, it's clear my constituents and people across the country deserve better. It's time for change.